Welcome to the Infinity Touch Control webinar. Uh, this is a brand new product from Carrier uh, that many of you guys have been waiting for for quite some time, so it's finally here. Uh, I'm going to take you through it in today's webinar and give you an idea of all the stuff that it can do. Uh, and then this will be followed up with hands-on installation classes for your technicians. If you need information on that, uh, let me know. All right, so the Infinity Touch. Um, a lot of you guys are already in, familiar with the existing Infinity Control. This guy's obviously a little bit different. It's a touch screen. It's a color touch screen to be more exact. And you can also see from the picture that it's up, it's a horizontal uh, thermostat instead of a vertical thermostat. Uh, the good news is it looks better that way. The bad news is when you're retrofitting it to an existing Infinity system, you're going to need some kind of back plate. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that as we, uh, as we go here. Uh, the bottom of the thermostat has a USB connection to it. Uh, that can be used for several things. We'll talk about them as we go, but it can be used for uploading dealer info, uh, consumer photos, uh, stat updates, things like that. This is what the main stat screen looks like. Um, so it's kind of like your main home screen, if you will. Uh, up in the middle, it tells you what the date and time is. On the top right, you can press. Now, can you guys see my mouse when I, uh, when I drag it across? Maybe you can. I'll use it and see if you can see it. Great. Um, but you can see on the top right there, you can press auto and switch between the usual heat, cool, fan, auto, and off type choices. Right now, if I hit the up and down arrows, it would change my heating and cooling set points. Uh, if I press the red heat 68 number, then the up and down arrows would move over to the heating side, and I could change those set points. Um, we'll go through quite a few of these as we get into the details of it. Um, this Infinity thermostat is backwards compatible with all Infinity equipment, uh, with the exception of rooftop units. Um, so anywhere you have in someone's home uh, with a split system, an existing Infinity thermostat, you could take that off the wall and replace it with this color touch version. So there are some upgrade options there. Um, it's the same exact wiring, the typical A, B, C, D, four wiring scheme uh, with green, yellow, white, and red. Uh, so it wires up exactly the same. It's also easy to retrofit when you're replacing someone's equipment because chances are pretty good they already have four wires um, in their wall today uh, in most cases. So you don't need to get that fifth wire, that extra wire pulled. So this guy can handle that. Um, it'll communicate to your furnace. In fact, it has to be used with a communicating furnace. There's no ability to use this thermostat in a standalone fashion. It only works with communicating furnaces and communicating fan coils. Then optionally, you can also use it with a communicating heat pump or condensing unit, but those could also be non-communicating versions. Um, this thermostat is specifically the one that you'll be using with the green speed equipment. Green speed meaning the variable capacity systems. So the green speed heat pump, the 25 VNA, uh, which is the variable speed compressor heat pump, uh, that heat pump has to use this thermostat. Uh, I know for a brief time we were using a special dash V version of the old hardware. It was basically this guy's software, control software, squirted into the old hardware temporarily because this guy wasn't available yet. But the stat is set up to do all the green speed control. Um, so that it works with that particular heat pump, which most of you guys know about. If you don't, we have a webinar on that you can watch later. And it's also used with the green speed furnace, which is a modulating gas furnace. So you can have modulating heat pump, modulating gas furnace, and this thermostat knows how to control all of those features to basically try to keep these units online and operating in the heating and cooling mode for as many minutes as possible throughout the day to basically give you very even comfort in terms of heating, cooling, and dehumidification. If you need more info on those, that's a separate discussion, and I'd be happy to help you with that stuff. Um, from the dealer perspective, there are a few things that are beneficial with this thermostat beyond all the benefits that your customer is going to enjoy. Um, one of those is the ability to load your logo onto the stat. So you, not only can you enter your contact info, your company name, phone number, website, that kind of stuff, you can also upload your logo onto that stat as well. Uh, you can also set up reminder information on there that pops up with your contact info. So um, in addition to you know reminders popping up for like a dirty filter and, the, and those basic kind of things, you could also have a reminder for a clean and check, like do a set it up for like a spring and fall clean and check reminder to pop up based on whatever dates you choose, that kind of thing. Um, and then also if someone needs to get their thermostat upgraded to a new version of the software that comes out a couple years from now or whatever, you'd be able to do that over the USB connection as well. 
Uh, you can also set up the schedules for the thermostat through that USB connection. I don't see any homeowners doing that because they're either, they're either going to do it from the front of the stat or they're going to do it from the web interface or their iPhone app or something like that. They're not going to use a USB drive. However, I could see a dealer doing that to have all their quote-unquote favorite schedule set up on a USB stick already that they could just dump into every single house that they do and the homeowner can tweak it from there. So that might be something you guys on the dealer side might do. Um, in terms of remote access, there are some benefits that the dealer might see because of that in addition to the homeowner benefits. Uh, the dealers would have the ability to get email notifications when a system uh, had a fault. They'd be able to log in and see the 10 most recent faults and get a little bit more troubleshooting before they actually go to the site. Uh, most of the other benefits to the stat are really for the consumer, uh, specifically the screen. Um, you, some people are fans of touch screens, some aren't. Um, I personally just think it's something else you got to keep cleaning, but um, consumers love that kind of stuff. I mean, they're used to using touch screens. They use it on their cell phone and their iPad and everything else these days. So they're used to using it that way. It's easier to navigate. I just click on the thing that I want to change as opposed to trying to figure out what button on the side is related to it. So it's really easy to navigate that kind of stuff. Um, they also have the ability to name all their zones specific to what they call them. So they don't have to have zone one, two, three, four. Uh, like I do on my comfort zone system at home, for example, you can custom name these things to match what you call the rooms. Uh, like I said, the USB, there's some dealer benefits to it. From the consumer standpoint, the only time I see them using the USB stick most of the time would be to upload a photo to use as a screensaver, a picture of the grandkids or whatever it's going to be. Uh, there's a little application that they use on their computer to format that picture so it fits on the screen properly, and then they put it on the USB stick and upload it. Uh, fairly similar to what we've been doing with the Benstar stats the past year, or two years, I guess. Uh, there's also some benefits on the energy conservation side. Um, so the ability to set up schedules, obviously you can set up schedules on any programmable stat, but as we go through this, you're going to see that it is actually fairly easy to set these schedules up and fairly intuitive, so we'll talk about that. Um, and then there's also the ability to track your energy usage. Um, this thermostat is going to basically um, track the usage of kilowatts and therms, or kilowatts, hours, excuse me, and therm usage. He knows what equipment he's connected to. He knows its various uh, consumption points. He knows how efficient it is. He knows how many hours he's running. So he can calculate those things. And then if the consumer enters their energy costs, you know, whatever it is, say, you know, 11 cents of KWH and 80 cents of therm, he'll go ahead and calculate the actual cost in addition to the consumption. So it's actually something meaningful to the homeowner. You can look at that on a day-by-day -day basis. You can look at it weekly, monthly, annually. You can compare one year to the next year. Um, assuming you've had it running and installed for more than a year, so it actually has the data. Um, so it is quite it is quite useful in that regard. Um, if anybody has any questions as we're going, um, just type them in that question chat box in the bottom right corner, and I'll take a peek at them every 10, 15 minutes and try to uh, try to answer them as they come up. Um, right now, I don't see see any questions. Um, there is also a weather app built into this thermostat. Uh, it looks very similar to the weather apps you're probably using on your Android and, and iPhones right now because uh, it's the same kind of thing. It's an internet-based thing. Um, you basically just have to tell it your zip code uh, and then it'll populate with this information. So for you guys that have been using Infinity controls or even predecessors to Infinity like their metastats and comfort zone and that kind of stuff, we've always had the ability to see the current temperature outside through a sensor. Um, now the difference is not only can we see the current temperature, but we can also see what the forecasted highs and lows are for the day and what they are for the rest of the week. And if it's sunny, if it's rainy, if it's you know, cloudy, whatever it's going to be. So that's all built into the stat. The stat can basically become a little hub for the homeowners as they're getting the kids dressed for school in the morning and all that good stuff. Um, I see a question that just popped up uh, asking about an outdoor sensor. Uh, asking if there is still an outdoor air sensor, and the answer is yes. Uh, there still is an outdoor air sensor that comes installed in your condensing unit or heat pump, and that's the one that the Infinity Stat will be using to make decisions based on. But in addition to that, it's also going to include the forecast data. So hopefully that, that answers John's question. Um, the Stat also has remote connectivity to it via Wi-Fi, so you'll be able to access this thermostat from the Internet. I'll show you some screenshots of that in a little bit. Um, so you'll be able to utilize that from wherever you're at, you're on vacation or you're a snowbird or whatever the case may be, you can adjust stuff. 
Uh, and then along with that, um, there's going to be applications that are not currently available, but hopefully will be very shortly, uh, where you can tie this thermostat into an app that runs on your uh, iPhone or Android phone or your iPad or either one of those platforms or any devices that are on those platforms, I should say. A couple other questions came in. Will the online system ping the controller and alert the user of a failed internet connection? I would like to say yes to that, Vance, because I've used that on other products five or six years ago. But I set one of these up in our test lab here on Tuesday, and, uh, and then I disconnected it, and it never gave me an alert. And I was getting all the other alerts just fine. So I'm going to say no. At this point in time, on, on this first release version, it does not tell you the website does not tell you if your thermostat lost internet connectivity, although I imagine that's something that will be included in the future. Um, so a couple other questions that popped up. Um, Vance asks if you need an outdoor air sensor or will it defer to the Wi-Fi weather? Uh, I don't know the answer to that question. He specifically writes, do you need, in bold letters, if you have to have it. I'm going to say, yes, you have to have it. I would not rely on the internet connection to pull weather data through and use that to decide if my heat pump is going to go into defrost or my humidifier is going to ramp up. So I'm going to say, yes, you have to put the outside air sensor in. Whether that's technically true or just a smart true, I'm not sure. Uh, John asks when the apps might be released. I don't know. If I gave you a date, you know, it'd be, a, you know, it'd be just a guess, uh, supposedly in the next month or so, but I never, you never know how that stuff goes. Uh, and then the last one, and then I'm going to go back to the presentation here. Jim asks um, about compatibility, saying that there might be a, a, a cutoff date for Infinity, and he's asking if you can use an MVC furnace, say, from 2001, and will this control work? I don't know what controls were in an MVC furnace in 2001, but if they're Infinity communicating controls with an ABCD plug on them, it will work with this thermostat. I'm going to talk more about that later, Jim. Uh, call, me, call me afterwards. All right, so back to the discussion here. Um, all the stuff I'm showing you so far is currently available and ready now, with the exception of the phone apps. That's the only one that we're still waiting on, uh, and probably because they had a third party, third party doing it. All right, so this thermostat um, is compatible with all existing Infinity communicating furnaces, fan coils, condensing units, and heat pumps. Uh, it's also compatible with some performance series condensing units if they happen to have the Infinity Communication board on them. The easiest way to tell an existing installation is if it has an ABCD plug on, on the board. Um, the only thing that this stat is not compatible with that communicates Infinity is quote-unquote small package products, which is not a big deal here in the Midwest because we don't use a lot of those. That's basically a little rooftop with, uh, with you know, the gas section and uh, condensing unit built into one box and ducted into your home. Uh, we don't do a lot of that here. Um, so it's not really been an issue. So for your normal split systems with furnaces and fan coils, uh, as long as it communicates infinity, you should be good to go. Um, so even though it is compatible with all existing infinity communicating residential equipment, that doesn't mean every single feature is going to work because some of those features are dependent on what sensors and communication are available in the equipment itself. Uh, for example, a couple of them that may not be backward compatible might be low ambient control, if you have a condensing unit that doesn't have low ambient control, by putting the stat on, it doesn't magically get it kind of thing. Same with the auto defrost on the heat pumps. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And refrigerant charging and things like that would fall into that same category. Um, so this, this new Infinity touchscreen stat um, can be used for both zoning systems and non-zoning systems. That's a change from what we've done in the past with Infinity controls. It used to be that you had to get a specific model infinity stat for a single zone and a different model infinity stat for a zoning system. Now this one SKU, this one uh, model number, will do both applications. Uh, in addition to controlling the furnace or fan coil and the air conditioner or heat pump, he also has the ability to take care of the humidifier, um, the filtration system, UV lights, and ERVs and things like that. Uh, Dan asks a question. Uh, so this isn't compatible with the Infinity small package unit either. Um, that would be, I'm assuming you're talking about the one on the bottom of the screen that I just showed. Um, the answer is no. If it's an Infinity communicating system and it's a small package rooftop unit, it does not, is not compatible today. 
all the split systems are compatible, which is the bulk of what we would deal with. Um, Pat, I'm going to get to your question later about connecting one of these guys as a service tool uh, outside, and we'll talk about that in a minute, a couple minutes. So this same controller used on a non-zoning system or a zoning system. Um, so on the zoning system, you can do everything we would have done on the regular system, control the humidifier, the furnace, the AC, all that stuff. Plus, he's also going to control all the zone dampers and coordinate with their, their individual zone thermostats to make decisions about turning heating and cooling on, as well as, in some cases, the capacity of heating and cooling if you have variable speed equipment. Um, so this main stat would become the user interface, typically located in zone number one. And then the other zones would have the remote room sensor, which is this, this little white thermistor box that's shown in the middle there. It's like a, I don't know, maybe a one and a half by two inch white box. A lot of you guys have seen them before on Infinity systems and comfort zone systems. It's just a dumb thermistor. He measures the temperature for zones two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to eight. Um, and he reports that back to the main system. If you don't want to use that in your zones, you can use what's called a smart sensor, which is the sensor on the far right. Um, and that guy can control, control zones two through eight, any zone that you want. Uh, and you can mix and match these. So zone one could have the user interface. Zones two and three could have remote room sensors. Zone four could have a smart sensor. Zone five could have a remote sensor. So you can mix and match those zones depending on what you use those rooms for. Uh, you also could optionally locate one of these remote room sensors in the main zone number one and then have the user interface, you know, in a closet or something like that. Uh, if you do that, just keep in mind that the humidity sensing is still done at the user interface. So make sure that's still in an ideal spot. Ideal meaning not in a basement or in an attic. Um, and then if you want to use third-party sensors because you like the little tiny button sensors or wireless sensors and things like that, we can support that with this product as well. Uh, hit me up for information on that later if you need it. Uh, so some of the benefits of Infinity in general, um, the ability to control the speed of equipment is the biggest thing that this stat's set up to do. Like I said, he's specifically designed to work with some of this green speed equipment. Even though he works on all Infinity equipment, he really wants to control a modulating gas furnace, a variable speed heat pump, and some of these things to keep these pieces of equipment running as long as possible. Um, at, but at low capacity and low energy usage um, in order to do the best job of keeping consistent heating and cooling temperatures as well as dehumidify. Installation is extremely simple. For you guys that have installed any other Infinity communicating products in the past, you know that you basically wire up the four wire communication bus between all the various pieces of equipment, furnace, AC, zoning board, user interface, whatever you got, and then power up the system and it goes out and finds everything on its own. And we'll talk about that here in a minute. Uh, this uh, this is the, what um, you're going to be physically seeing if you order one of these. Uh, so that first part number up there on the top, that SYST, blah, 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 that's actually the touchscreen uh, user interface or thermostat, if you will. And it comes with that router on the bottom left of the screen there, that white router with the black antenna. Those two are packaged together as a kit. That is the only way it is sold. Uh, and that is for a couple purposes. One to simplify the installation for the installer by not having to mess around with the homeowner's Wi-Fi network. Uh, and then two, to make sure that there's a consistency, especially at the beginning of this product launch, um, with the types of routers that this stat might be communicating with to avoid any weird niche routers that could cause a problem. Um, so that, those two come together. Uh, that, router, that router basically plugs into one of the jacks on the homeowner's router. Uh, and then this guy basically becomes your little Wi-Fi network for all of your Infinity stuff in that home. Uh, the other accessory that you might be using with this, in many cases, is going to be that decorative backplate. Like I said, the stat is horizontal. His predecessor was vertical. So in a retrofit, you're going to want to order that backplate. Uh, so, so you, unless you're a very good painter, I guess, which hopefully none of you guys are. Uh, let's look at the questions here real quick. Uh, so Pat asks, will the new Infinity controller be able to program over the unit model plug so we can get max CFM in cases where we need extra airflow? I do not know the answer to that question. Uh, I've not seen any screens thus far that look like that, but there's tons of screens in there. I'm going to say it's probably a no, Pat, um, but if you want to play with it when you guys come uh, to, the, to the class, I'm certainly willing to stick around and we can figure that one out. 
Uh, Dominic asks, will this recognize third-party products like UV lights uh, from other manufacturers uh, or UV light air purifying type devices for bulb changing? Uh, the answer to that is yes. So if you're using like an RGF or, a, uh, or an APCO triatomic um, UV light, if you will, which is basically, well, it's a whole other webinar in itself. We won't talk about that, but it, it's, a, it's an air purifying device that has a UV light in it. You could, in the Infinity, set that up as a UV light um, because it doesn't actually communicate with the light anyway. It's just a timer that basically tells you it's time to change your bulb. So you can say, yes, I have a UV light, even though it's really an RGF product and then have it tell you, you know, whatever, three years later to change your bulb. So you can make that work if you wanted to, Dominic. All right, so moving on. Uh, like I said, the main user interface can control single zone systems or multiple zone systems, up to eight zones. You would have one of these color touch user interfaces per system. Uh, so you can't put it on a zoning system on zones two, three, four, and whatever. He only goes in zone number one. The rest of those zones have to be taken care of with a remote sensor or a smart sensor, which is fine because all their information is going to pass to this guy anyway, so you'll still be able to access it all on the Internet, so you didn't really lose anything in that regard. Um, this guy has the capability of doing five periods a day. Uh, most of our residential products are used to having four periods a day. This guy will do five. I'll kind of explain that when we get to that screen. Uh, it is seven-day programmable. It has time to override which basically means it has a hold button that you tell it how many hours or minutes the hold is going to last for. So instead of putting it in hold and then forgetting about it for like a week, uh, you put it in hold and say, I want it to be in hold, but I want it to turn off at 5 p.m. today. Um, and then that way you're not, you know, use wasting energy after that point. Um, vacation scheduling is nice. It's like some, some product we've used before with you guys. You basically tell what date and time you're leaving, what date and time you're coming back, and what settings you want it to maintain in between there. He shuts the system off right when you leave that first day, and he turns it on a couple hours before you come back to get it up to the temperature and humidity that you want. Um, this guy measures both temperature and humidity. It measures temperature in all the individual zones. It only measures humidity in the main zone number one. And you can also adjust your fan speeds and all that kind of stuff. Um, very similar to what you guys have on the current Infinity systems. Uh, there are tons of reminders that are built in, like we said, for filters, UV lights, ERV maintenance, cleaning checks, and stuff like that. I'll show you a few of those as we go. Uh, physically, this is what he looks like when he installs. It is a multi-piece design, uh, two pieces. Uh, that back plate on the far right, that's an optional thing. You'd be putting that in, in a retrofit where you're taking off a vertical stat. Otherwise, you would not order that. The other two pieces, the stat and the surface-mounted back plate with the six wiring terminals, those you'll always be using. The six wiring terminals, you can't see it from the other side of the board. You'll see the four colors and the A, B, C, D on there. And then the other two terminals on there are in case you want to wire an optional remote sensor. Additionally, those two remote sensor terminals are actually blocked off with a little plastic cover to make it harder for the installer to accidentally wire something to them if you did not intend to. Uh, this guy comes with a silver faceplate on him. And in the box are also shipped a black and white faceplate. So you get all three face plates with it. Um, it's a little bit weird because this you, you're going to see the side. It's kind of like the Venstar color touch stats. You're going to still see the side of it with the old color. So if you put something on there other than, than silver, it's probably going to look a little bit weird from the side, but maybe they'll like it better from the front. In either case, you get all three colors in the box. The homeowner can pick whichever one they want. It's kind of like changing the skin on your phone. Uh, wiring is very very simple and it's exactly what you guys have done on other Infinity products. So on the far left it shows you the user interface A, B, C, D which is green, yellow, white, red plus the two extra terminals that are capped off that you can optionally use for one of the remote room sensors. That four wire communication bus goes from the user interface down to the furnace to the condensing unit to the zoning panel uh, to a NIM if you have one of those um, and those all can be in any order. It doesn't matter whatsoever what order they're wired in. They're all going to communicate to one another. So all the, these pieces of equipment that are involved have these four wire pins on them that provide the communication. Two wires are actually for communication and two wires are actually for 24 volt power that these devices are stealing from the furnace transformer to power them up. Uh, that's the remote sensor. You guys have seen that numerous times. He's two wires. Uh, it's a thermistor so it's not polarity sensitive. So it does not matter which one you wire to which terminal. So it's somewhat idiot-proof. You can do it however you want. 
This is the smart sensor. He's four wires with the same A, B, C, D coloring scheme, so that's very easy to do as well. In addition to passing temperature over to the zoning panel, like this thermistor guy would have done, the smart sensor not only passes temperature, but he also has the ability to communicate to the main panel, and he can thereby change the set points. Uh, the end user can see the outdoor air temperature at the smart sensor, so it's great for putting in a master bedroom or something like that, so you know how to get dressed. Uh, I can see the indoor humidity. You can adjust the quote-unquote fan speed, which really doesn't adjust the fan speed of the furnace per se. It really adjusts the airflow going into that particular zone with a combination of adjusting fan speed at the furnace and tweaking the zone damper because different zones may have different needs. Um, Vance asks if the smart sensors have uh, interchangeable covers or skins available, and the answer, I believe, is no. Um, so that's probably all the more reason to leave the silver one on the main user interface because I believe all the smart sensors now come in silver, I think. Uh, at least this picture looks like they do. Um, so I don't think there is. I've not seen anything uh, for that. Um, maybe I, I can find out for you afterwards, but I've never seen anybody change those out. Uh, this is the zone damper module. If you choose to put this on the zoning system, uh, you can see that the board only takes up half the space. That's so you can install an optional second board in there. Um, the first board takes care of the first four zones. The second board will take care of up to eight zones. And you can see on the top of that circuit board there, the same ABCD coloring wiring. There's two sets of terminals on there because you might be bringing in many of these remote sensors on there, the smart sensors. So they give you more terminals so you don't have to try to jam them all under one. Um, but this is where that communication would land on here. This is where on the left side over here all the zoning uh, the three-wire zone dampers would wire to, and on the right is where you'd wire in remote sensors if you wanted to use the little thermistor guys. The outdoor units, or excuse me, the indoor units, which would be furnaces or fan coils, they have the same four-wire plug, A, B, C, D on here. And then the outdoor units have the same four-wire plug. Now this one's down at the bottom, A, B, C, D. So all these guys are just connecting these A, B, C, D wires in any order that you choose, and then they will automatically communicate to each other. Uh, down here on the bottom, that little black guy sticking through the sheet metal, that's actually the outdoor air sensor that comes shipped with the condensing units and heat pumps if they have infinity communications. Uh, so he's just sticking through the bottom of that panel to sense that ambient air. If that happens to be a bad location and it's direct sunlight, you can re relocate him somewhere else, or you can actually wire it to the furnace instead if you choose to do that. That sensor is used for several different functions. One is to display on the main user interface or the smart sensors um, what the actual outdoor temperature is, so homeowners can make decisions about that. Um, it also gets used for the defrost cycle on heat pumps, and it gets used for the humidifier control uh, on furnaces in, in colder climates like ours. Um, so you can press manual. The user can press manual and dial in the set point for humidity that they want or they can press window protect, and then it'll adjust the set point based on the outdoor ambient temperature to make sure that we don't cause too much humidity in the space to condense on the cold window surfaces. Uh, very similar to other humidity control products we've used in the past, like Thermitostat, Comfort Zone, Infinity, and so on. Works exactly the same way. Um, the homeowner's not going to see all these charts and stuff I'm showing you in the background. That's for your, your info. They're just going to basically press the arrow up and down to give them more or less um, but if you put it in that middle, it basically corresponds to curve number five, which means on, you know, whatever, a five-degree day, if you go up the curve, um, it's going to try to maintain 27% humidity. And you can see where those curves go. So uh, you can make decisions based on that when you're setting up for the homeowner based on whether it's an old home or a new, tighter home. We would still be using the NIM module, Network Interface module, in certain applications. Same rules apply as with the old Infinity product. Um, you would need to have this if you want the Infinity system to control your carrier HRV or ERV. However, if you have a zoning system, it already has the HRV, ERV terminal on there, so you don't need to buy this board. But if you put one of those on a non-zone system, that's when you need this extra board because you don't have any other any terminals to utilize. Um, you can also utilize this if you have non-communicating outdoor equipment. Like I said, the indoor equipment, furnace or fan coil, has to be Infinity communicating. But the outdoor unit, it's optional. So if somebody just bought, you know, a new air conditioner three years ago, and it's, you know, some off-brand, and now today they're buying a new Infinity furnace and touchscreen from you, they're probably not going to want to change their outdoor unit. So you're probably going to have to try to make it work. 
If it's a single stage unit, no problem. It wires right to the furnace and the furnace can actually switch the relay to enable the Y to common signal for the outdoor unit. However, if you have a two stage outdoor unit, then you're gonna need to use this NIM module because uh, the, the furnace doesn't have a second relay that it can use. So this NIM module would have to be your Y2 connection. Um, you'd also use the, utilize this on a non-communicating uh, heat pump um, for the same reason. I need more than one relay going outside and the furnace only has one to give me. So this guy gives me extra relays. That's basically what this guy is, is a relay box. Uh, so when you get all this stuff wired up, which should be fairly easy to do because everything wires the exact same way regardless of what kind of product it is, uh, and then you power it up, uh, what it does is start searching for the equipment. So the, the Infinity Touch Controller goes out and interrogates every piece of equipment on that communication cable and says, what are you, what's your size, what's your mile number, and then tries to configure everything for that scenario. Um, so it first starts with the indoor unit and then it finds your furnace or your fan coil. Then it goes and looks for an outdoor unit. Uh, if it found a fan coil, it will also try to look for a communicating electric heater. If it doesn't have a communicating electric heater, then it'll ask you to enter the KW size of a non-communicating heater if you happen to have one. If you don't, you enter zero. Um, it'll look for a zoning board and all the zones associated with that board. It'll look for a NIM module and any accessories like that. Once it finds all those accessories and adds them into the system, that determines which configuration choices that you're going to eventually see. Um, one of the configuration choices you'll see when you first power it up the first time is that it'll ask you what type of filter do you have. Do you have a regular air filter? Do you have an electronic air cleaner? Or do you have an infinity air purifier? Um, and then once you pick those, on the left side, you can also pick uh, to enable or disable the pressure monitor. If you click disable, then the filter alerts are based on the timer, which is the, the one in the middle there, clean every one month, it says in this screen. Um, or you can change those months, obviously. If you enable the pressure monitor, then instead of using a timer for the dirty filter alarm, it will actually use pressure drop through the system. Uh, because the furnace board has the ability to not only communicate to all these pieces of equipment, but also communicate to its own indoor variable speed motor, if you have a product that has that functionality, a variable speed indoor motor on Infinity, uh, he'll be able to use that motor to get data from him to calculate the pressure drop at any given time through the system. So he'll figure out what the pressure drop is at startup when everything's nice and clean. Then as he looks at it over the months and sees that it gets to a certain level, he'll say, okay, now your must be dirty because the pressure is increased, and therefore I'm going to generate this dirty filter alarm. So it's actually a true, a true filter sensing change. He actually knows the filter is dirty as opposed to guessing when it's dirty based on time. So it's a very nice feature for, for, the, uh, for the homeowners. Instead of having to change filters early or hit ignore when the, sun, when the alarm doesn't apply, all the other alarms are based on time only. The filter is the only one that actually senses to see if it's truly dirty or not. The other ones are based on time. Uh, so if you told it you have a humidifier, it'll ask you when you want to change the pad, how often, and it'll make those reminders set up for you. Um, same thing with the UV light. Uh, and then to answer Dominic's question, if you had an RGF air purifying light or a, uh, what's the other one, an APCO triatomic light, you would just use the same UV light alarm on here and just change and set it for that. Instead of saying change it, you know, every year like you might on a UV light, an RGF I think is every three years, uh, and, and that kind of thing. After you set up those accessories, it'll go out and look to try to find a zoning system. If it does find a zoning system, it'll report back to you uh, what kind of zones it has. So zone one is itself, the user interface. Zones two and three were smart sensors. Four and five were remote sensors, and so on down the line. Uh, you can also then at that point or later, if the homeowner wants to, at any point in time, change the name of those zones. So instead of one, two, three, four, five, you might have first floor, second floor, basement, or you might have you know office, kitchen, living room, bedroom one, bedroom two. You might have Jimmy's room, Sally's room, whatever you want to name them, you, you pretty much can do. I think you might be limited to about guessing 24 characters that look like maybe. Um, that should be enough to custom name them however you want. And then those names will populate on all the screens so you don't have to remember which zone is which name or have a little cheat sheet you'll actually know what it is based on the name, sunroom, my bedroom, whatever. And then it gives you a summary of all the equipment that you've just in, just configured and installed. In this case, it was an old retrofit on the 58 MVP with a 38 TDY three-ton condensing unit. So it figured all that stuff out and it's listed on the screen here. Uh, and then later on, the installer can go and tweak those things if he should want to. Um, this is what it looks like when it does that static pressure check. 
Um, so it does that to figure out what the static of the system is and then, then uses that information later when it's going to tell you when the filter is dirty or not because the static increased. It will also use it on the variable speed fan systems um, to make adjustments to those. Um, and it will certainly use it on the zoning system, which I'll show you in a minute. But it will tell you the static pressure, the CFM, and the RPM. I have no idea how they managed to get uh, no CFM but half an inch of static on this screen when they took the screenshot, but it's pretty impressive. Um, if you have a zoning system, uh, it'll do the duck assessment test, which basically means it does that same exact um, uh, static pressure check that we just did a second ago. It does that with all the zones wide open. And then what it does is it does them with just one zone open at a time. So not only does he know the static and CFM associated with the whole system, he now knows the static and CFM associated with zone 1, and then he does zone 2, zone 3, zone 8. So he knows every one of them individually, and then he'll give you a report telling you which capacity each of those zones represents for the whole system, and it'll tell you how much leakage there is. So if it had, you know, for sake of argument, 1,000 CFM, and that means zone 1 is 120 CFM, zone 3 is 110, zone 7 is 100 CFM, and 110 CFM is leakage. We have no idea where it's going, right? So it's moving through the system as a whole, but we can't associate it with a particular zone, so we assume it's leakage somewhere. So it is kind of a nice little, uh, little, little check when you're first starting that system up. Uh, but it also gets used later on when he's making decisions about how many stages of heating and cooling he can turn on based on how many zones are calling. If zone 8 at 4% of total capacity is calling for cooling, he's probably going to have to wait for somebody else to call for cooling to get enough airflow to make it meaningful to run him. Otherwise, it's just going to trip out. So after all that stuff, um, you get back to the main home screen. So that it did all of its own self-configuration stuff. You had to input a little bit of data, but it basically configured itself. You get back to the main home screen, which looks like this. This is what the homeowner would normally see as well. They click on it, it would bring up the first zone. In this case, they called it the living room zone. Um, and you can adjust things from there. There's that little eye in the bottom of the screen uh, for information. Uh, it's like a little help button. If you click on that on a given screen, it'll give you a little description of what that screen's for. So that's one of the main screens, so it tells you what that's all about. Uh, but other screens, it might be a little bit more useful to tell you what you need to do. Um, if you want to adjust the heating or cooling set points, you just click on them. So if I were to click my hand, my finger on this red heat 261 number, the little arrows would show up underneath them, and I can bump them up and down. If I click over on the blue cool to 81 number, the arrows would go over by him. If I want to change to a different zone, I can click on living room, and it will give me my list of zone choices to pick from. If I want to change the system mode from auto, I could click on that, and it would ask me if I want heat, cool, or fan only. If I click the hold button, right, so on the bottom left it said hold and tell. Oops. It said hold and tell. If I click that guy, then I would get to change um, his, uh, his time for how long I want him to be in the hold mode for. So in this case, I plug him in until 10 a.m., and I click done, and then it's going to maintain those set points until 10 a.m. tomorrow and then it's going to go back to its normal scheduled program. So that's kind of a nice feature. Uh, the whole button, as you guys know from numerous studies you've heard me talk about before, is like the biggest energy waster of all residential heating and cooling, or even just building energy in general. Getting rid of that whole button is fantastic, and this is a way to kind of keep it for people that want it, but still make sure we don't stick, sit and hold forever. Uh, if you click on Menu, there's numerous choices available for things you can configure. I will show you some of these as we go. We don't have time to do all of them, but I'll try to show you quite a few of them. Uh, the comfort profiles you set up for the kind of temperatures you like for different scenarios, away from home, sleeping, things like that. Uh, the schedules are where you obviously put in all of your scheduling. I'll show you that. Vacation will show you. Reminders is where you can set up a, you know, a fall clean and check service reminder or something like that. Display to change the contrast and those kind of things. I already showed you the energy tracking. Uh, service is where your installers will go if they want to adjust things and they want to tweak stuff or they want to use the checkout mode. I'll show you a few of those screens as we go. Uh, photo upload, if the homeowner put a screensaver photo on a thumb drive, this is where they would press to upload that. Change the zone names. Uh, enable the wireless Wi-Fi connection, the weather app. So we'll show you some of these here as we go. The first one is the comfort profile uh, temperature and fan. And by the way, if you didn't hear me earlier, some people logged in a little bit late. Down in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, there's a question chat box. You can type questions in there, and I will try to keep up with uh, answering them as we go. Uh, I did miss one, looks like. Uh, Vance asked, uh, what does the hydronic kit do? 
Uh, what that is for is on a fan coil system, uh, if you want to add hydronic supplemental heat instead of electric resistance supplemental heat, um, you would get that kit, uh, and that would allow the Infinity system to control that hydronic heat, or radiant heat for that matter, although the radiant heat function does not work with a zone system. It's only for a single zone system. Um, but instead of electric heat, you could have a small boiler or a water heater that's doing electric or doing a hydronic coil. All right, so hopefully that answers Vance's question there. All right, so the comfort profiles. Um, you get four comfort profiles that you can set up, home, away, wake, and sleep. And you can there then apply those profiles to whatever time schedules you want, which I'll show you later. Um, so this here shows you that I got four of them. If I click on one, like we did on this example here, we clicked on the away button. Uh, and it brought up the away one and said, all right, now it's set for 61 heat, 81 cooling, and the fan to be off. I can change those. I can click on any one of them and adjust them. Uh, and then say save, and it'll set up that profile for me. So I set up for one for home, away, wake, and sleep. And I'll show you what to do with those in a minute. And then on the top there, I can also copy those um, from zone to zone. If all my zones are going to have the same profiles, great. I can just copy them over and be done with it real quick. Um, I also can set up... Uh, Profiles for humidity and ventilation. Um, so I might want to have um, more or less humidity control when I'm at home versus not at home. Um, if I set up the home for button here on these screens, it applies to the wake sleep uh, settings. And the away one applies to the away plus the vacation settings. Um, that way I can turn my ventilator off when I'm not there. There's no reason to ventilate my house if nobody's home. I don't need to have the same humidity set points when nobody's home, that kind of thing. The scheduling, there's two choices in how you can do scheduling. You can do it the traditional way, which on here is called, I'll handle scheduling myself. I guess you can do it three ways. You can handle it yourself. You can upload it from a USB drive from your computer, which I don't anticipate anybody doing, but you could theoretically do that. Dealers might want to do that, like I said, as a starting point for the homeowner, to have their favorite settings on a USB drive they take to every job. And then the third way is the first one listed there, which is guide me through scheduling. Uh, some of you guys have used the Honeywell Prestige stat for the past couple years where it has an interview-based programming. This is kind of like that. In fact, in general, this stat seems to have taken all the stuff we've done with Honeywell Prestige and Venstar Color Touch stats and combined them all into one. So we got the interview-based programming. We got internet connectivity. We got color touch screen. We got interchangeable face plates. We got photo uploads. It's kind of got all that stuff kind of jammed into a new thing here. But anyway, it asks you simple questions, and then it builds your schedule based on the questions it asks you. Um, so the very first is like that bottom screen there where it says, you know, which zones do you, or which, which days of the week do you want to work on now? All days, weekdays, or you can pick specific days. You can pick Monday, Tuesday, Thursday if you wanted to, or whatever you want. And they'll do those all as one group for you. Um, but it basically then asks you, when do you wake up? Are you at home all day or not? If you're at home, I mean, if you leave, what time do you leave? Do you want us to use the setback for you? Um, when I get when I get back home, what time is that going to be? Do I like different temperatures when I sleep? Yes, I do. Okay, well, what time do you go to sleep? So it asks you those kind of questions, so that way people don't have to figure out scheduling. We've come a long way with scheduling. You guys know that you know it used to be to configure a seven-day programmable stat with four periods a day. You're scrolling through like 40 screens, and all of us in the HVAC world would get lost in there. So gosh knows a homeowner had no chance of doing it, which is why they all use the hold button. Then we went to like what the Infinity had where I can kind of see everything at one time at least and know what was going on. But now we're taking it the next step further, which is let's use the language the homeowner uses. What time do you wake up? What time do you go to bed? So it should be a lot easier for the homeowner to actually have a chance at saving energy in their house. And uh, those those schedules are built based on that. And you can it'll apply these those comfort profiles to those time periods. So based on the way I answer those questions, it says, okay, well, you wake up at 6 a.m., I'm going to use the wake schedule. And remember, I already told it what temperature I like for the wake schedule. And uh, then at 8 o'clock, I'm you know, at home. At 9 o'clock, I leave to go work to the work or whatever it is. I don't know who configured this stat for the example, but they left for work for 9 o'clock. It's a pretty sweet job already. Um, but it uses the away schedule then because I'm not home. I get back at 6, so it uses the home schedule. I go to bed at 10, so it uses the sleep schedule. It kind of knows where to slot those guys in, and you can change those. If I just click on any one of them like it shows on the right here, I can change those times and tweak those kind of things. As you guys can probably tell, this is going to be one of those things you're going to have to play with to become familiar with it. This webinar is just to kind of give you a preview, but if you're like me, you have to touch these things to learn them, which is why the training class we're going to do for this, even though it's not hard, 
but we're going to do a training class and a hands-on version for you guys, uh, for your techs or for you. It'll be a lot more fun and better learning to do it that way. But right now we're doing it as a webinar because that's about all we can you know, do until the classes start. Uh, the vacation mode is very simple. You just tell what, what date and what time you're leaving, what date and time you're coming back, and what temperatures you want it to maintain while you're gone, and he will do the rest. So in this case, I'll be back on June 9th at 12.57 p.m. Obviously, I'm a very anal person who plugged that one in. Um, so, you know, at 11-something on June 9th, uh, that morning at 11 a.m.-ish, it's going to start figuring out what it needs to do to get it to the comfortable temperature that you normally want by 1 o'clock that afternoon. Um, the homeowner can turn on and off any of the reminders that they set. They'd have to actually go into the service screens if they want to change the timers. Right, so if they don't want to see that UV light thing anymore, if they decide they're not going to replace it, they don't like UV lights, blah, 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 they read some crazy article, they could just turn that, that pop-up reminder off and never see it again. Uh, if they want to actually change how often it pops up, then you have to go into the service screens and change those. But the homeowner can basically turn these four individual ones on or off. And the way they were set up is what you would already did in the setup screen. We have another question on here. Or actually, it's more of a comment from Pat saying, cool, this thing rocks. I don't know if it rocks, Pat, but it is actually pretty cool, and we've been waiting for some of these features for a while, so it is pretty exciting that we actually get to play with them now. Uh, there's an operating status screen, so it can tell you what's going on right now at this moment, or tell the homeowner, I should say. The service guys have all their own screens, but this is what the homeowner would see. My heat pump's in defrost mode, therefore my hydronic heat is on. I don't want to sit there you know, freezing while I'm in defrost mode. It also could kick my electric heater on if I didn't have hydronic. Uh, my humidifier's on, my ventilator's in the highest speed, my fan's on. So it'll give you those basic status things that you can see, or the homeowner can see. They can adjust the contrast and all that stuff. They can turn the screensaver mode on or off. They can turn the clicking sounds on or off. The stat, when you click on buttons, it clicks kind of like a keyboard, click, click, click. Um, you can turn those off if you don't like them, or if you want to be able to change the set points without your spouse knowing that you're changing them. A little stealth mode, I guess. Uh, the energy consumption thing is really cool. Um, the only thing I don't like about it is you have to actually run the unit for a while to get some baseline so it can do some good calculations for you. But it will start immediately telling you how much energy you're consuming on a day-by-day -day basis, and you can go look at each individual day. Um, you can also look at it you know, on a monthly basis. You can look at it on an annual basis. This particular screen we have popped up here is looking at it this year to date versus last year for the whole year, telling me how much energy did I use on cooling, how much was for my heating, how much was my associated with running my fan continuously, how much for running my fan in the heat mode, um, all my electric, all my gas. It gives you a nice summary of that. Now, it's only as good as the utility cost you plug in. So if you leave the defaults in and the defaults are inappropriate, then these numbers are going to be all jacked up. But if you put in the correct utility cost that the homeowner has, and for right now I tell you guys probably put in $0.11 cents per kilowatt hour and about $0.80 cents per therm. That's a pretty good average of what's happened with the local utilities for the past three years. Obviously, these things change all the time, and gas has been going down even a little bit more. But four years ago, it was a buck something. Now it's like 50-some cents, and you want to include everything that, that represents that. So not just the cost of the actual gas, but all the delivery charges and the account fees and taxes and whatever else they stick on your bill and average it all out. So for right now, use 11 cents a kilowatt hour and use 80 cents a therm. And then that, you know, every year if you want, we can tweak those. And let me know. I'll tell you what the new, the new best guess is. But it's a pretty cool feature so the homeowner can see what they're doing. And they can kind of tweak it, too. They could change those utility costs to kind of tweak it in with their bill. And this should mirror their bill. But your bill only tells you what happens on a, uh, for your whole entire house and only on a monthly basis. This is specifically related to heating and cooling, and it can do it on a daily basis and show you what's going on. So it is kind of nice. All right, so that brings us to the Wi-Fi. Um, and obviously, when we do the hands-on class, we're actually going to set up the Wi-Fi uh, routers and actually get these things to communicate on the Internet. should be an interesting class. We'll see if our IT guys uh, allow me to have as much traffic through our building as I'd like, but we'll get it going. Um, so this is kind of just a preview of what that looks like. Uh, like I said, this thermostat does ship with its own Wi-Fi router that you then take, and it comes with the Ethernet cable, and you plug that Ethernet cable into the router and into the back of the homeowner's existing router at their house. Uh, and then this becomes its own little Wi-Fi hotspot just for HVAC. I guess you could use it for something else if you really wanted to. Um, but you tell it, yes, I have Wi-Fi, enable it. Uh, it'll go out and scan for local Wi-Fi networks. In this case, down in the bottom right-hand side, you see it found four different Wi-Fi networks. Um, the name of the network is written on the back of the router. 
This one happened to be called My HVAC. Um, so that's the one we would click on right now. The passcode is also written on the back of the router. So you punch that passcode in. So that's kind of the nice thing about them shipping it with this Wi-Fi router. Now you don't have to ask the homeowner for their passcode, which they might have been a little squirrely about giving to you. Uh, now it doesn't really matter. It's unrelated. Um, we punch that passcode in. It'll connect to that Wi-Fi router. It gives you a little status update on what all the information it is, what IP address it's getting assigned, all that good stuff. Um, and then what it does in the next, on the one I did in the lab, it took about five to seven minutes. Uh, not only did it, did it do all this, um, but then it went out and tried to find the carrier server. And then you go to the carrier website, and I'll show you that in a little bit, and log in and set up an account. And then you come over here and you look at this screen and you punch in the number off the screen onto your account and then that links those two. It binds your thermostat with its unique code to the account you just set up on the website. So we'll do that in the hands-on class so guys get comfortable with that. And I'll show you the website in a couple minutes here. Um, then the last thing to look at on the actual thermostat itself is the weather app. It's really simple to do. You basically just put in your zip code and say save and then it automatically pops up this app. That shows you not only the current temperature that you would have gotten with infinity anyway, but also the forecasted highs and lows for the day and what's going to go on with the you know, rain, sunny, cloudy, and then what's going on for the rest of the week. I don't know how accurate it is, but it can't be any less accurate than any other weather forecast you've ever seen. Uh, the stat itself will also show you the last 10 system faults, very similar to what you've had on other infinity products in the past. And it does it in a fairly English fashion, so it tells you the timestamp. Apparently, this one happened in uh, 1961. What the heck is up with that? Uh, but it tells you the timestamp, and then tells you, you know, in this case, low pressure switch open, so you can see that and you know what it is. And those same events will also populate onto the website, so that way you can see them that way as well. Um, just like with the temporary dash V version of the of the traditional Infinity controller, this uh, touchscreen one has the charging setup screens. Um, so you basically tell it which coils you have and uh, how long your line set is and what size your line set is. And he will help you weigh in your charge and tell you how much you need to, 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 to uh, add to the system. Um, so he knows how much comes shipped in the unit. He knows how much fits in the refrigerant pipe you told it you installed. So therefore, he knows how much you need total. Um, you can also do it with the subcooling screens. Um, so it will actually calculate the target subcooling for you, in this case, 8.3 degrees. It's no more sophisticated than the little slide rules everybody's had forever. It's just now you don't have to have a little slide rule. This guy will figure that out for you and help you charge the unit. Um, so that stuff's built into there. Um, it depends on um, the unit you have it hooked up to. Uh, the one in the lab we hook it up to is the green speed heat pump, and it has all these features. I'll have to try hooking it up to some of the older ones and see if I get any portion of this at all. Um, but my guess is it's only for the newer units. Um, Pat had asked a question earlier about taking one of these controllers outside and wiring it up to a unit um, to be an interface. And yes, you can definitely do that. Um, if you're going to do it, if you're going to do it on a regular Infinity system, um, you need to be careful because you don't want to have, you don't, how do you want to say it? It's different on a regular Infinity condensing unit than it is on a green speed condensing unit because the green speed condensing unit is only a two-wire Infinity communication cable, not four-wire. The drawing I'm showing you here is a uh, Infinity one, excuse me, a green speed Infinity one. So A and B are the communication. C and D would be the 24 volt power, but he doesn't use the 24 volt power. He has his own out there, his own transformer out there. So if I take a stat off my truck and I bring it outside and I wire it up to a green speed unit, I would wire him up to A and B for communication, and I would wire him up over here to this utility and this C to get power. That's just 24 volt power being stripped off of the uh, green speed heat pump. And that will power up this stat, and I can thereby use all the refrigerant charging screens outside or the maintenance screens or whatever I was trying to do. And what it does when I hook one up outside on that green speed unit, it locks out the indoor infinity stat so the homeowner can't touch stuff while you're trying to charge this unit. Um, if I want to do it on a regular non-green speed unit, then I would have to tap them into A, B, C, D, and I probably would have to take the stat off the wall in the house is my guess. Um, so hopefully that answers it a little bit. Uh, if they do have an alert uh, screen, 
Uh, Pat's asking what about an older Infinity Control, like a Dash D version. I don't know the answer. We're going to have to find out from the service guides on that. Sorry about that one, Pat. Um, I know I know this touchscreen one will do it. I know the Dash V as in Victor will do it. But I don't know about a original Infinity or a uh, B or C Infinity. Actually, there wasn't a C. It was just, I think there was. I don't know. Um, but I'm not sure about those. But Dash V as in Victor or a touchscreen will do that. Uh, if there is a system fault, it will pop up on the main screen in a pretty um, bold lettering um, or colored lettering saying that there's a problem and then tell you what the problem is. Uh, for example, the one I hooked up in the lab this week gave me a uh, low limit alarm, mainly because I had it hooked up to a circuit board that didn't have any units on it. It's no mechanical equipment, it's just a circuit board hanging there. Um, so I'll give you that alarm, and then that same alarm message will populate on the website as well. Um, so the website is www.myinfinity.carrier.com. That's the consumer portal for it for Infinity, for both the new and old Infinity, by the way, um, but we're mainly going to look at the color touch screen. When you first log into that site, it'll ask you whether you have an old or new one. It'll show you a picture of the color touch and a picture of the regular one and say click on the one in your house. Um, but the homeowner comes here the first time or you'll do it with them as an installer and um, you'll click sign me up and create a user password and login like you would on any other website. I'm not going to do that and bore you guys to death. Um, and then if you're coming back a second time, you would use your existing you know, username and everything. If you don't have an Infinity Control right now, but you just want to come here and use this website, you can. Um, you won't log in, obviously, but there's a demo here. Try it out. You click on that Try It Out one, and you'll get a demo of what it looks like to interface with one of these guys. It's not, it's not a live one. It's just a software demo, so you're not really messing up someone's house. Or you can click Learn More, and there's a ton of videos. I'll show you those in a second. Um, so if I click Learn More, this is what I'll get. I'll get a couple of videos up here in the top, and then... This is just a screenshot on my computer right now, but there's like 20 some videos down here that are like two to five minutes each. And if you click on them and play the video over here on the left, it tells the homeowner how to do whatever it was they're trying to do. So there's one on there like, how do I change my set points? How do I do this? How do I do that? You click on it, watch the two minute video, and then you go to your stat and do it. The stat's really intuitive and you really don't need this, but you know, it may be easier for some people to see someone else do it and then they'll feel good about going and tweaking stuff and changing stuff. Um, you guys probably do it all the time now. You probably Google stuff and find a YouTube video on how to fix something and then do what the video said. This is the same kind of thing, but it's all in one nice spot and it's, you know, factory endorsed. So that's what the learn more button does. It shows the homeowner a bunch of videos. There's also, like I said, some of these marketing videos at the top you can use with someone who doesn't have one of these guys yet. Uh, they can also find a, uh, you know, a carrier dealer on here and things like that. If you click on the try it button, then you'll get to see an actual demo. Uh, if you had chosen to log in, which I did, this is where it would take me. Um, and I have my locations on top or my account. Uh, in this case, my location shows me all my locations I have set up. I only have one in this case. It's in Melrose Park in our training lab. It happens to be connected to a zoning board with three zones on it that I custom named first floor, second floor, and basement. I could have called them anything I want. I just, just happened to pick that. It tells me my current temperature for each of those three zones, the current humidity, just keep in mind the humidity is always going to match in this case because it's coming from zone number one only. Zones number two and three are just getting the same humidity reading as the first guy. Uh, what mode it is in, what's my heating and cooling set points. If I want to change any of them, I click on change settings. Uh, you can see down at the bottom here, it shows me all my recent notifications. So yesterday I had a notification for a limit lockout. Like I said, my board wasn't even installed in a piece of equipment. It was just hanging there, which is why I got that. It also shows me, because I chose to let it show me, Anytime someone changes one of my settings, it'll show on here and send me an email as well. Every time one of these limit lockouts or any of these notifications happens, the end user will get an email saying that that happened. Um, so right now, every time that board in Melrose Park locks out, I get an email on my phone saying, hey, the board's locked out, or the limit's locked out, excuse me, uh, which I already know. Um, if I don't want to get these system update emails, I can turn those off in the user settings. If I chose to have clicked on this change setting button in orange here, it would bring up a screen like this, which looks very much like the actual thermostat. To make things easy, the screen has been set up to look like the thermostat so the user doesn't have to learn how to do things a different way. Additionally to this internet connection version that I'm showing you right now and the thermostat, there's a third way you can do it, which is you can download a little uh, PC uh, Adobe application that runs on your computer that looks exactly like this as well. Um, and then you can do it that way without being on the public internet, if you will. 
there's three ways to connect to it. If you want those applications, you click on downloads on the main screen and you're able to download a Windows or Mac version of it. That's also where you will eventually go to download the iPad, uh, iPhone, uh, and Android apps when they are available. Uh, but once I click on here, it navigates just like the regular thermostat. All the screens look exactly the same. I click on them exactly the same way, but instead of using my finger, I use my mouse. It's pretty much the same deal. I did have a question come in from Adam. When there's an alert failure notice, will the contractor info or logo pop up on the screen? That's a good question, Adam. I think the answer is yes, but to be honest, on the one I was playing with, I did not upload a logo or put any contact info into it. I need to do that when I go back to the lab on Tuesday, um, and then I'll see what it does. So the ones on mine are just popping up that there's an alarm, um, but I've not loaded any contact info to see anything better. So I'll have to let you know that one next week, Adam. I'll have that answer before we have the service text in, in the classes. Um, so the screens navigate the same way. If you click on the menu, you get the same kind of settings. Um, so everything is exactly the same way. There's an extra button here to sync it up. Uh, it's going to sync on its own in the background, so you don't really need that button, but it's there. You feel better about pressing it, I guess. Uh, I have noticed that if you make a change and hit the sync button real quick, it actually syncs up the old information instead of the new information, so just be careful of that. Uh, like if I would go here and change this from 60 to 61 degrees and then immediately bring my hand, mouse up here and click this sync button on the top of the screen, it would happen before it actually had a chance to make the change to the server and it would pull the new stat data. So just change the setting, let it do its thing, and don't, don't be too crazy about it, I guess, is the rule for now. Uh, in addition to all that stuff, um, there is a bunch of marketing uh, things that are associated with this product, just like we've been doing with all the new furnaces and heat pumps. Uh, so for this thermostat, there is a binder, um, and we have some of these binders in the office that we are going to give to the students that come to the installation class. Now, we know those students don't need a sales binder. If some, some retail person in your office probably does, um, but those guys as part of that class are getting one of these thermostats anyway because that's the thermostat they're going to use to practice on, and they take that thermostat back with them to their shop. So the idea is that they're going to take that thermostat after they're done doing the class and this binder and give them to the dealer principal or to the retail sales guy or whoever it is that can then use these things. So that stat that they're going to use in the class can actually fit into this binder. And the binder comes with a little 24 volt transformer that you can wire up so you can show homeowners what this screen is going to look like. Obviously you can't do everything because you're not connected to an actual furnace. Um, but at least you can do enough to show them how the screen navigates and how good the resolution is and how easy it is to schedule. You can do some basic stuff with them so they get the idea. So that actually fits into the binder. And then in the three ring binder clip is all the usual stuff you guys are used to getting, which is all the you know, marketing collateral and literature and samples of the postcards and all that stuff. There's a thumb drive in there that has the digital versions of all those things, plus some consumer videos, which are fairly corny, as you might expect, because they always are. Um, and there's the install manual, owner's manual on the thumb drive, and in the binder, and, uh, and the product data. Uh, anything meatier than that will be something that we'll have uh, separately for the technicians. So this binder is mainly intended for uh, sales folks. Oops, sorry about that. Um, so there's tons of like, you know, little uh, flyer things, postcards, um, selling guides. Um, there's like a little, uh, I think there's like a little three ring binder that you can use as a selling guide. Um, leaflets. So you know how they usually are. They give you like 100 things that they come up with and you end up using three in the real world. But you got plenty of choices to pick from on which ones you want to use. Uh, there's the little uh, three-ring binder to show people to walk them through what it's going to look like, like a little tutorial binder. Uh, like I said, a transformer comes with the main binder. That way you can put the stat. There's already a hole cut out for the exact size of the stat, so you push the stat into that hole and wire the transformer to it, and now you can have like a little tabletop demo type thing. Um, there's banners if you want them for your showroom floors and things like that, or trade shows. There's posters. Um... There's uh, sales videos. Um, there's a bunch of uh, videos that are going to be posted on YouTube um, featuring some, you know, fictitious family uh, as they go through and you have video for comfort and remote accessibility and energy savings and things like that. All right, so with that being said, if anybody has any more questions, type them in or, oops, or give me a call. My phone number is up on the screen. Uh, type them in or give me a call later and I'll do my best to answer them. 
And if you need any information about the installer classes, let me know about that. I'll see which ones are coming up for you in your area, and we'll get you taken care of that way. And that's all I got for you guys. I'll stay on for another one or two minutes just to see if any more questions pop. Thank you.